Achieving Absolute Zero, The Race for Artificial Cold Cold has always held a place in human imagination as a harbinger of death, but in the age of scientific enlightenment, humans sought to control cold for both scientific and industrial purposes. In the last hundred years, many scientists have worked to achieve a temperature known as absolute zero, the temperature at which all atomic movement in a substance grounds to a halt. The ability to control cold has transformed the lives of humans across the globe, changing many important aspects of our lives, such as transportation and connectivity. Humans have used ice to store food for thousands of years. The oldest recorded knowledge of using ice as a means to preserve perishable items dates back to 1700 BC in Syria, when the ruler of a Syrian city ordered an ice house to be built to hold food. However, ancient people did not use cold for much more than storing food. Interest in harnessing cold to help everyday life arose in Europe during the scientific enlightenment. One of the most famous chemists who experimented with controlling cold during the time was Cornelis Drebbel, a Dutch physicist who attempted to create an air conditioning unit from table salt and ice. He also attempted to cool Westminster Abbey and show King James I his creation. While his artificial cooling machine may have been a success, the question of what cold was still remained. The famous Irish chemist Robert Boyle led research on just that question, attempting to find out what caused cold. During his time, most people believed that cold was a substance, just like water or air. Boyle's experiments proved otherwise. Boyle filled a barrel with water and weighed it, then put it outside to freeze. After he froze the water, he weighed it and found that it weighed the same as before. His conclusion was that cold was not a substance, but rather a process that matter undergoes. He wrote in several of his books about the phenomenon of cold, but many people still didn't believe that cold was in a substance. One of the many people who tried to prove that cold was a substance was Antoine Lavoisier, a very influential French chemist, who not only thought that cold was a substance, but thought that heat too was a substance. He called this substance caloric, a weightless gas that could pass through solids. The caloric theory was sound in many of its arguments, such as the flow of thermal energy from one hotter object, or an object with more caloric, to a space with lower caloric, or a colder object. However, the idea of caloric would be disproved by an American inventor by the name of Benjamin Thompson. Benjamin Thompson, sometimes known as Count Rumford, had worked on boring cannons for the German army. When he worked to bore the cannon holes, he noticed that the bore would heat up significantly during the process. He had also heard of Antoine Lavoisier's idea of caloric and contemplated how he could disprove it. With his job in the cannon business, he was provided the perfect opportunity. Rumford submerged a bore in water and began to bore the cannon. As the bore got hotter, the water began to boil. Rumford continued boring and the water continued evaporating showing that endless amounts of caloric could be taken from one object. However, since that was impossible, the only thing that could be generating the heat was motion. While chemists were debating what cold was, others were creating ways to measure it. Grand Duke Ferdinand of Medici had created the first accurate liquid thermometer in 1657, eight years before Robert Boyle had published his longest book regarding cold. However, there was no unified system of measuring temperature. As instrument makers all over Europe did not make the same thermometers, they could use any scale they chose to. Without a unified thermometric scale, the studies of cold could not continue. The first widely adopted temperature scale was created by Daniel Fahrenheit, a German physicist who was also very skilled at making thermometers. Fahrenheit defined zero degrees as the temperature of a mix of ice and salt, and 96 degrees as the temperature of the human body. Another famous thermometric scale was devised by Anders Celsius, a Swedish astronomer, who based zero as the temperature at which water boils, and 100 as the temperature at which ice melts, which was later reversed to yield the modern scale. 
With the development of these thermometric scales, European scientists could now agree on the temperatures of different natural events, and events that occurred inside a laboratory. The race to achieve artificial cold began again when a Scottish chemist named William Cullen produced artificial cold in the laboratory. Cullen created a partial vacuum over a container of diethyl ether, which boiled and took in heat from the surroundings. However, this artificial refrigeration did not find any purposes outside of Cullen's lab. Another chemist, Martin Van Marum, liquefied ammonia, but did not apply what he saw with ammonia to other gases. Many scientists attempted, and succeeded, at making artificial cold. Michael Faraday was among those scientists, and liquefied chlorine and ammonia. His work showed that changes in the states of matter also changed the temperature of said matter. Charles St. Ange de Laurier was another scientist who managed to achieve a temperature significantly below zero degrees, cooling carbon dioxide to negative 110 degrees Celsius. However, the study of cold was still in its early stages. Awareness of the usefulness of cold began to grow as the new century set in, with multiple people creating and patenting artificial refrigeration machines. The domestic icebox began appearing in homes in Europe and America in 1802, and later was replaced by mechanical refrigerators. The first patent for a refrigeration device was given to Thomas More. As well as cooling food, artificial cold was used to cool homes during hot weather. In the 1840s and 1850s, the science of thermodynamics was beginning to grow as more and more physicists conducted experiments regarding it. The introduction of a new thermometric scale, the Kelvin scale, brought about a change in how scientists would describe colder temperatures. The Kelvin scale based zero as the lowest temperature anything could be, and set 273.16 degrees Kelvin to be the triple point of water. Working separately, scientists William Thomson, the creator of the Kelvin scale, and Rudolf Clausius stated the first and second laws of thermodynamics. Business entrepreneurs also began to sell ice, collecting and shipping it as far as India, where ice was less abundant. As the science of cold got more advanced, the record lowest temperatures plunged even deeper, with some scientists eventually managing to liquefy gases that were once thought of as non-liquefiable, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. Carl von Linde and Georges Claude invented new ways of cooling gases relatively simply. In Linde's method, air is compressed, cooled, and then decompressed multiple times, giving a drop in temperature. In Claude's method, air expands isentropically in two chambers, and then via isenthalpic expansion in a thermal expansion valve. The invention of the Dewar flask by James Dewar contributed to the liquefaction of hydrogen, also by James Dewar. The hardest gas to liquefy was by far helium. However, it was achieved in 1908 by Camerling Onnes using a staggered system of cooling. First, he cooled oxygen down to liquid temperature and used it as a coolant to liquefy nitrogen. He then used the liquid nitrogen as a coolant to liquefy hydrogen and used hydrogen as a coolant to help liquefy helium. He was the first to liquefy helium and set a new temperature record of negative 269 degrees Celsius, or 1.5 degrees Kelvin. Kamerling Onnes also investigated superconductivity of certain materials when cooled to a temperature of near absolute zero. Onnes found that a mercury wire at 2.4 degrees Kelvin lost all electrical resistance. After investigating this property in mercury, he also found it in lead and tin. He received a Nobel Prize for Physics for his work in 1913. The famous physicist Albert Einstein and Indian physicist Satyendra Nath Bose were instrumental in naming the next steps to bring mankind even closer to achieving the elusive temperature known as absolute zero. Bose had worked with Einstein on the topic of photons, and together Einstein and Bose developed the idea of a Bose-Einstein condensate, a group of atoms with the lowest possible quantum state. A German physicist, 
Fritz London, suggested that Bose-Einstein condensate was the cause of superconductivity in materials cooled to a very low temperature. While Einstein and Bose were working on their theories, record temperatures reached a new low as Dutch physicist Willem Kiesem solidified helium at negative 272 degrees Celsius. While experimenting with liquid helium, Piotr Kapitza, John F. Allen, and Don Meisner found an interesting property that the liquid helium possessed. It seemed to have no viscosity and seemed to be able to defy gravity and leak out of containers. They called this property superfluidity, as the liquid helium acted like a fluid with supernatural powers. In 1987, a new method of cooling atoms was created in Germany, cooling atoms with a laser. If the laser were to be tuned to the same frequency as the atoms oscillate at, the laser could stop the atomic movement and lower their temperature to absolute zero. However, a different laboratory in Boulder, Colorado was also on the brink of creating the first Bose-Einstein condensate. After perfecting and attempting the laser cooling method for years, Eric Cornell, Wolfgang Caterli, and Carl Wyman of the Colorado group created the first Bose-Einstein condensate from rubidium atoms cooled to 170 nanokelvins. For their achievement, they received a Nobel Prize for Physics in 2001. The current world record for the lowest temperature is 1 picokelvin, created in 1999 at the OV Luna Sma laboratory in Finland. The science of cold still fascinates humans today, and scientists are constantly striving to be the first to reach even closer to the limit of cold, absolute zero. New properties of supercooled materials are being discovered every year, and eventually could revolutionize human life. As advancements in technology bring a new era, reaching the lowest depths of cold could be near in the future. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, if you enjoyed, leave a like, a favorite, share the video with your friends, or you could even subscribe for more educational content. Check out some of the other videos on this channel, or some of the featured channels for more content.